Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Today, inshallah, we're going to solve Cambridge exam, October, November 2021, paper 63. Let's start it. Question 1. Hot concentrated hydrochloric acid react with solid manganese 4 oxide to make chlorine gas. Chlorine gas can be dried by bubbling it through a liquid drying agent. The diagram shows the apparatus used to make and collect a sample of dry chlorine gas. There is one error in this diagram. Name an item labeled X and Y. X is a conical flask and Y is a gas syringe where chlorine gas should be collected. Name the substance labeled Z. Z is a solid manganese 4 oxide. On the diagram, draw an arrow to show where heat should be applied so that the chlorine gas is made. Here, below the conical flask, we should draw an arrow to show the position of heat where we should heat the reactants. There is one error in the way the apparatus has been set up. On the diagram, draw a circle around the error in the apparatus. So we will go back to the apparatus here, draw a circle around the tube that comes out from the drying agent. This tube should be above the level of the drying agent, so after the gas has been dried, it should be travel upwards through this tube to the gas syringe. Describe what would happen if the apparatus has been used before this error is corrected. The drying agent will be pushed out of the flask. Of course, it will be pushed out through this tube and it will be collected with the gas in the, in the gas syringe. Question 2. A student investigated the temperature change where zinc reacted with two different aqueous copper sulfate solution, solution Q and solution R. In experiment 1, a polystyrene cup was placed in 250 cm cube beaker for support. Using a measuring cylinder, measure 25 cm cube of solution Q and put it in the polystyrene cup. Using thermometer, the initial temperature of the solution Q is measured. Then we will add 3 gram of zinc powder and start the stop clock. Using a thermometer, the mixture in the polystyrene cup continuously stirred and the temperature is measured every 30 seconds. The initial temperature is 23. Here we will record the temperature every 30 seconds. The thermometer diagram shows the temperature. So we could record the temperature every 30 seconds. Then we will calculate the temperature change by subtracting the temperature minus the initial temperature. Every time we will subtract our reading from the initial temperature to calculate the temperature change. Then the experiment is repeated for a solution R instead of solution Q. Here the initial temperature is 24. We will use again the thermometer diagram to record the reading every 30 seconds. Then for each reading we will subtract it minus 24 which is the initial temperature to get the temperature change. Complete suitable scale on the y-axis and plot the results for experiment 1 and experiment 2. Draw a curve for best fit and you should take care of both curves should be stored from the origin point zero zero, and you should label your curve. We will plot the, f the 8 points for experiment 1 correctly but you should take care that start from the origin because at zero time, at zero second there was no change in temperature, then we will take the eight readings for experiment two, plot another curve showing the results for experiment two. I choose multiples of five as a scale for the y-axis and I label this one for experiment one and the second curve for experiment two. Here you have five marks for this curve, two marks for all points corrected, correctly plotted and one mark for the scale of the y-axis, another mark for labeling your graph and the fifth mark for the uh, smooth curves. From your graph, did you the temperature change at 110 seconds in experiment 1? Show clearly on the grid how you work it out your answer. 
so we will go back to our curve here in the position of 110 seconds we will go upward until meet curve for experiment one showing temperature difference between 28.5 and 29 so the reading will be 28.75 you have to show your work on the grid so the temperature is 28.75 degrees celsius predict the temperature of the solution in experiment 2 after 5 hours and explain your answer of course after 5 hours the reaction has finished so the temperature will be the same as the room temperature which was 24 suggests why the, the experiment were done in a polystyrene cup rather than a glass speaker the polystyrene cup is an insulator so we should use it to minimize the heat loss describe how the results would be different if a glass speaker is used in a polystyrene cup instead of polystyrene cup the glass speaker is not insulated so some of the heat will be lost to the surrounding and all our temperature reading will be lower suggest one change that could be made to the apparatus that would improve the accuracy of the result explain why this change would improve the accuracy of the result we could use a pipette to measure the 25 centimeter cube of the copper sulfate solution so that the pipette is more accurate than the measuring cylinder and our readings will be more accurate question three solid s and solid t were analyzed tests were done on each substance first test on solid s test one solid s was placed in a boiling tube and then 10 centimeter cube of dilute hydrochloric acid were added the observation is ever -passance. so we will go to the second test the solution form it in test one was decanted we removed the excess solid and the solution u is form it we add sodium hydroxide dropwise and then an excess to solution u our observation is why it precipitated which is insoluble in excess so that observation represent the presence of calcium ions because calcium ions form a white precipitate which is calcium hydroxide which is insoluble in excess the test given on the gas format in test one show that is carbon dioxide describe how the gas produced in test one could be tested to show that it is carbon dioxide give the expected result for your test so the effervescence here was carbon dioxide that indicate that the anion is carbonate and we should write the test for carbon dioxide gas the test is bubbling the gas through lime water and the result is the lime water turns cloudy or milky now we should identify solid as Solid S is calcium carbonate because here we have the cation is calcium and the anion is carbonate. Test on solid T. Solid T was iron 3 chloride. Solid T was dissolved in water to form solution T and solution T was divided into four equal portion into four test tubes. To the first portion we add sodium hydroxide dropwise and then in excess the observation is red brown precipitate that is insoluble in excess sodium hydroxide because iron 3 hydroxide is insoluble in excess sodium hydroxide the second portion of solution t we add aqueous ammonia and our observation is red brown precipitate also iron 3 hydroxide is formed to the third portion of solution t we will add one centimeter cube of dilute nitric acid followed by a few drops of aqueous silver nitrate adding silver nitrate will form silver chloride which is a white precipitate so the observation is formation of a white precipitate the fourth portion of solution t we will add one centimeter cube of dilute nitric acid followed by few drops of aqueous barium nitrate here we don't have sulfate ions so barium nitrate will will not react and our observation will be no change question 4 
Catalysts are substances which increase the rate of reaction but are unchanged at the end of reaction. Aqueous hydrogen peroxide decomposes slowly to form water and oxygen. Copper oxide is an insoluble solid. Plan an investigation to find out if copper oxide is a catalyst for the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide. You must include how your results will tell you if copper oxide is a catalyst. You have access to copper oxide, aqueous hydrogen peroxide, and normal laboratory apparatus. First, in a beaker, add 10 cm cube of hydrogen peroxide using a measuring cylinder. Then, weigh copper oxide, add it to the beaker. Measure the volume of oxygen gas collected in the gas syringe every 10 seconds. Filter off the copper oxide, dry it, and reweigh it. Then we should repeat the experiment using the same volume of hydrogen peroxide at the same temperature but without copper oxide. You have to take care of the variables that should be kept constant here, the volume of hydrogen peroxide, and the temperature. So we will repeat the experiment without copper oxide using the same volume of hydrogen peroxide at the same temperature. And then we will compare the volume of oxygen gas collected in the two experiments. Copper oxide could be a catalyst for the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide if the volume of oxygen gas collected is higher in less time that indicate higher rate of reaction and if the mass of copper oxide is the same after the experiment and that indicate that the copper oxide are unchanged at the end of the reaction. That's how our result could tell if copper oxide is a catalyst. Now we come to the end of our exam. Like the video and subscribe to the channel to receive all the update. Thank you for watching. Wish you all best of luck.